Hello, everybody. I'm Chef Ben. This is Dinner with Ben, brought to you by Ashworks Cutting Boards and Atlantic Livestream. And today I'm joined by my very, very good friend, Dr. Emily Kirk. Oh, thanks. Emily, thank you for coming. My pleasure. So Emily is an expert in Latin American studies, whatever that means. Yep. She is a, she's a doctor of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought tonight we would do some Cuban food because, you know, you like Cuba and stuff, right? I certainly do. So we're going to, oh, going to mute that. So we're going to do some Cuban food. So how familiar are you with Cuban cooking, Emily? I eat a lot of it. It's delicious. Because you go to Cuba a lot. Uh, yeah, once or twice a year I'm working there. You were just there. Just there in December. Fantastic food. Um, so you say that, but a lot of people say that, like, Cuban food's kind of bland, bland. or, like, kind of boring. Mm-hmm. So what's your, that's not your experience with it? No, not at all. I think um, I, I'm very lucky because I get to stay with family and friends. Um, and when my family and friends cook uh, proper Cuban food, it's wonderful. It can be hit or miss if you're in a touristy industry or a touristy area or, or eating at hotels. That's very different uh, than actual um, Cuban cooking in someone's home, which I love. Which makes sense because they're kind of catering to tourists and yep, that kind of absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I should say too, before we go on, that we will be doing a giveaway today. Oh. We'll be giving away this beautiful Ashworks Cutting Boards uh, couples charcuterie set. We have a long charcuterie board and then two kind of tasting boards. So stay tuned for the end of the show because we'll be giving that away. Okay, and we got to start cooking. Let's do it. So, as is tradition around here, you're going to do the majority of the work until I get annoyed and take over. Got, got so, uh, first thing we need to do is get the pork going. So, what we're making is like Cuban kind of pork stew. Separately, mm. we're going to make uh, black beans and rice. Excellent. We're going to cook up some cassava, which if you guys don't know what that is, that's okay. We'll get to it in a sec. And we're going to make like a mango dessert. Sounds amazing. Okay. Let's do it. So, first thing I need you to do is cut up two onions. Cut so, we're just going to dice them. Now, do I do it the way I want to do it, or the way that will make you happy? The way that will make me happy, please. Okay. Hello, Christine. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Sue. Hello, everybody. Yep. Mm, yep. I'm in this way, right? Yep. So, but if you flatten it first, and then uh, it's easier to cut through. And then this way? Yeah. My husband does this, and I hate it, so I will acquiesce today. Big words already. Yeah. Big words. What are you? Oh, good. What are you doing? I don't know. Okay, wait, let me see. You go chop, chop, chop t around. No, but you got to cut it in half first. Oh, oh right. So okay. just straight down through. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Brian. <laughs> Wendy says everyone seems to know me so well. Well, Em and I have been friends for, like, oh, you got to peel it first, Em. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> this is why I wanted to do it my way. What are you doing? I oh can, my god. I can do it. I can do it. How long have we been friends? Like 10 years? 10 years? A little over that? Yeah, it's a long time. No, okay. We'll do this half because I screwed Whoa, it up. Oh my god. I'm cracking under pressure, Ben. Okay, hold on. Hi, Brian. Nice to see you. All right. Let me just fix this. Okay, let's. I'll okay. do the next one better. I hope so. All right. Oh, sorry, I bumped you. No problem. So again, guys, uh, if you're just showing up, we are doing a giveaway at the end. Um, and whoever wins the giveaway, if you live, um, if you live in the HRM, I will hand deliver it to you. Uh, if you live anywhere else, I will mail it to you. Hello, Chris. Hello, Kat. Hello, See? everybody. I can do it. Yeah. Cut in half. We'll end off first. So here's what you want to do. Okay. You want to cut. The top off first, top off flatten first. it down, peel it, and then do that. Got it. <laughs> Sue says, new rule, all onions done by me before the show. You have my full support. <laughs> Hello, Mitch. Then. Yep. Then. Yep. Peeled. Oh, this is where I'm going to get very emotional. Don't cry, Em. It's okay. Well, you're complaining about my cutting, and I'm doing my best. Well, sometimes your best just isn't good enough, Em. Uh, you've been talking to my parents. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a trick with this last one, because we're going to need more onions later on. Okay. Hello. 
Okay. Okay. So with this one, what are you doing? What? Oh, right. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw that, but she just laid the knife blade up. It was not passive she's, aggressive. She's angry with me already. We're like two minutes into the show. Fantastic. So Emily, how did you become a doctor? Actually, uh, before you answer that, watch this. Okay. So keep this seems more pertinent. Keep that on. Oh right. Okay. That's why you keep your hand up. Got it. If you have your fingers down and you slide through, you're gonna mess yourself up. It's not gonna be pretty. See? Oh boy. Come ça. C'est très bien. Oui, merci. Okay, so how did you become a doctor? I feel like I need to have a really good answer because I have not uh, been a stellar performer so far. I <laughs> uh, became a doctor because I have no other life skills as evidenced by my um, onion cutting. And She says that, but she's a terrific drinker. It's a really good point. <laughs> uh, it's true. Sorry. <laughs> That took a turn. Uh, yeah, I loved spending time in Cuba and Latin America. I lived in Cuba and Mexico, and then just decided to go to school to do it, and schools kept giving me money to study that. So I thought, doing it. seems like a reasonable decision. And now you're an expert. You've got two books under two your books. belt. Yep, and working on number three. Edited a whole bunch of other ones. Yep. Yeah, she's pretty impressive, and she's my friend, so. That's a two-way street. <laughs> Uh, Wendy wants to know uh, if you find me intimidating. If I find Ben intimidating? In cooking? Absolutely. In, so, in so life, no. That's probably good. I'm not a very intimidating guy, I don't think. Uh, okay, we need some garlic no, too. No, I want to amend my answer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> impressive, not intimidating. I'll you're, take that. You're super impressive well, in you. the kitchen. Oh. You did that. Uh, couldn't just leave it there? Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so we need to chop up some garlic. Okay. I'm just heating up a cast, enamel cast iron Dutch oven over kind of medium heat. Uh, there's just some olive oil in there, and then we'll throw the onions in. Actually, we'll brown the pork first. So you want to cut the garlic. Am I doing it your way or my way? So just cut the ends off. Yeah. So I'm going to show you. That one's already peeled. So I'll show you one, you can do the rest. Okay. okay? Cut the end off. The end that has like the the root on it. The butt. Crush it. Peel comes right off. Okay. Okay, and then just chop it. Got it. Uh, Christine says Buenos noches, Doctor Emily and Chef Ben. Buenas noches. Uh, Christine, I did say giveaway. We we're giving away this lovely Ashworks uh, Valentine's Day set. It is a charcuterie board with two tasting boards. Uh, stay tuned at the end of the show. And again, if you live in the HRM, I will hand deliver them to you. If you live outside the HRM, I will mail them to you. Uh, can the garlic and onions commingle? Yes. As long as the garlic's not cut too small. Oh, too small. So, like, you'll see in some recipes, it'll say, like, dice the onions and then mince the garlic and yeah. throw them in the pot together. But then the garlic all burns because it's so much smaller than the onion. So if it's about the same size, it's okay, but if everything's smaller oh, and different sizes. That's handy to know. Yeah. I have actually burned the garlic quite a lot. Okay, well, M's doing that. We're gonna talk about this weird looking thing right here. So this goes by many names. Um, I call it cassava. M calls it yuca, um, as do a lot of other people. Uh, whatever you call it, it is like the third most important starchy crop in the world. Um, it's used in Latin America, it's used in Africa, it's used all over the place. Like millions and millions and millions of people rely on this every day to survive. And we're gonna use it today. Uh, and if you've ever had tapioca, it comes from this guy. Now the thing about it is that it is poisonous if it's not cooked. It has a very high uh, level of cyanide in it and a few other chemicals that can make you very ill. So you have to cook it very, very well. But it's, uh, it's a really good kind of like starchy ingredient. It's really good fried in like chips or um, boiled, with boiled salt and pepper which is what we're going to do stuff. with it. Yeah. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. In the meantime, we just have a couple pounds of pork shoulder here. It's just cut up into one or two inch cubes. We're going to season it very well with salt and pepper. So I'm going to get you to grind this on there. Love grinding. And I forgot to get salt out. 
I ran out of salt. Oh no. Did you take yourself out of the picture, Mike? Because mm -hmm. I was going to introduce you, yeah. finally. Is that Anybody sufficient? Start? No, more. Uh, so Wendy says she had uh, cassava this for the first time this summer, and they really? just boiled it. It's a really, really good uh, kind of root, and you'll see once we finish with it that it gets really soft and tender, but you got to cook it for a while. Is that safe, though? No, but I can't get this stupid thing open, and we need some salt. That's enough. Thanks for calling me out, Mike. Appreciate <laughs> it, Bob. Call everybody else out. No. Do I? Okay, Em, do you want to season up that pork for me? Oh, boy. Is that enough? You seem to throw it when you do it. Okay, you massage that all in there. Uh, cassava cake. Now? Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just kind of massage it in. Uh, Christine, what do you do with the cassava cake? I'm interested in that. Oh, my pan's getting too hot. Okay, we're just going to pop this right in there. You can wash your hands in there if you want. Whoa, fire. What? It's gone, it's gone. Oh, that's all right. Just some oil splashing on the hot things. Uh, Charlene, yes. This is stock in a box, and the reason why is because I go through chicken stock way too fast to make it. Like, I make it whenever I can, but I burn through it really, really quickly. I just can't keep up with it. So, yeah. I buy the stuff in a box. I don't see a problem with it. Um, and I know that most of the people out there aren't going to make it themselves. So I think it's okay to use the stuff in a box. Um, okay. And so we just yep. got to stir this beef a bit. Got it. Not too much. Just going to move it around and then let it sit so it'll get brown. Kind of like that little crust that's happening on the back okay. of the background. Hello, Patrick. So, Em, do you remember when we first met? Yes. It's kind of an embarrassing story for me. It's terribly embarrassing. It's hysterical. Do you want to, you want to tell it? Hello, Kathy. Yeah, so we'll just let that sit for a minute. Uh, yes. So, I was new to the city, or new again to the city, uh, and a friend of mine invited uh, me out to go see uh, some bands play. Um, and Ben was there, and I was sitting next to him. And the calm, cool, collected professional you see before you uh, was not the same gentleman as I met over a decade ago. And at one point, uh, a band, there was a lull in the song, a nice little lull. And uh, your friend of mine, Chef Ben Kelly, did the most awkward, loud clap it, at the end, or at the, um, in this lull. At the pause, yeah. The pause. I thought the song was over. He did think it was over. That's not a problem the other hundred people had who were there. I, of course, as a wonderful supportive friend, just started laughing at him um, with some points. So that was the beginning of our beautiful friendship. Later, he sprained my ankle in a soccer game. Yeah, I got her back. Illegal tackle. You deserve it. I would it. argue. I would support that statement also. She deserved it. But, yeah, all sorts of fun activities. Yeah, we've been friends since. Mm -hmm. Even though you've lived all over the world, but you always come back. Yeah. Because you're from here. This is the best place on earth. No, it's because you're cooking so good. That's true. It is and good. I really like your wife. That's fair. That's two she's, really she, good reasons. She's okay. All right, let's take a look at this cassava. Okay. Did you get a good look at it? Yeah, got okay. it. So, this one right here. Have you ever cooked with this before? No, I have a lot of experience eating okay. the cassava, but not cooking. So I'm going to actually deal with this because... It looks pretty aggressive. Yeah, and I don't get to play with it very much either. So we're just going to pop this off carefully. Then we're just going to cut it up into chunks. And we should be able... 
to just kind of make a nice little slice. And then maybe, sometimes you can just pull the skin right off of it. Yeah. Bite it. It's poisonous. It's yeah, it's unless you like until you cook it, you can't you can't eat it. It doesn't smell very good either. It smells toxic. Also, that's not safe. What happens if you eat it? Uh, you can get really sick. Great. Yeah. Let's cook it well. I will. <laughs> uh, Kathy says you're precious, Suze. I'm not, I'm not on the show this time. Uh, Christine would like to know if you've tried Filipino food. If I have? Yeah. Uh, so... Go on. Emily's allergic to shellfish and nuts and everything else. So yeah. it's, uh, I'm guessing you probably haven't eaten much Filipino food. Uh, I've eaten some when I have very good friends, much like Indian um, food as well, that normally have lots of nuts. Uh, so when friends cook it for me, I absolutely love it. It's so tasty, but unfortunately I can't uh, have it in restaurants or when I'm traveling. But I'm very lucky to have some excellent uh, chefs as friends or cooks as friends. You have other cook friends? Not like you. It kind of hurts my feelings. It was meant in a nice way. Oh, I see. Because you you're, you're a, a professional skirt, and they do it as a hobby. So Sue's just asked uh, what Emily does when she's traveling with her food allergies and if she has any advice for anybody out there. Yes. Uh, I always make sure to know how to say the words in the language. Um, I can't eat this. Where's the nearest hospital? I need a doctor. I'm dying. Uh, things like that. And I bring a lot of snacks. So normally my, half of my suitcase is full of snacks granola bars and stuff. Just be conscientious. I think you can still go have an amazing time somewhere. You just need to be conscientious of what you're eating, which is a bummer, but when the alternative is to not go anywhere, do anything, it's kind of less interesting. That makes sense. So I'm just going to cut this in quarters, and then we'll give it a nice rinse. And I don't know if we can get a close-up on this or if you can see this. Where are we at? Um, so there's a line here, this yellow line. So once we cook that, that'll come out really easily because that's actually pretty uh, fibrous. It doesn't really mm -hmm. break down, so you got to take that out. But we can do that. We can either cut it out now or we can take it out after it's cooked. If you cook, the whole, if you cook it whole, uh, then you can just take it out later. I'm just going to cut this in. Cook it. You got to boil it first and then you can, so you have to boil it first and then you can uh, like fry it into chips. You can do all kinds of stuff with it after that, but it always has to be boiled first. Wouldn't have wanted to be the person to discover that it was poisonous. Well, it's like anything. Like there's a lot of things that, you know, you got to cook first or that, you know, is only good for you at certain times of the year or like anything like that, right? Somebody discovered it all or all the weird like berries and stuff that are poisonous. Mm. So we tried all that. Oh, I'm missing comments here. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Wendy says I'm one of a kind. That's so true. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Uh, Christine says they don't have much nut-based food except one, mostly eat pork, chicken, and beef. Hello, Cassie. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can boil them whole and then take the core out too, but I don't want it to take that long to cook them, so that's why we're cutting them up. So we're going to take these. Can you throw all this stuff in that bowl back there, please? Yep. 
And we can add the garlic and the onions to the the meat to the pork. Got it. And I know that some people are watching and they're looking at the pork and they're saying that it's just boiling. This is like, this is not French food. This is not Italian food. This is a very kind of Cuban way to do things. It's not necessarily the way I would normally do it, but we're trying to stay just true to. So right in with the meat? Yep. Yeah, just dump it all in there. As true to tradition as possible. Now we'll get this on here. Stir? Yeah. I think with the, uh, a lot of times with the Latin cuisine, not that I have much experience with anything else, but um, I find frequently there's things that need to cook for a super long time as well. Yeah. The culture of the women staying at home historically. Yeah. And so actually this meal. Oh, it um, smells amazing. So I was talking to Mike before we started. This meal, I was actually doing a bunch of research into Cuban food and I noticed I was watching this show, and they were following all these, like, uh, sugarcane farmers. Mm. And so the wives would cook all day, and then the farmers would just come and they'd eat right in the field. And so this is actually kind of based on what I saw them making on that show. So it's, this meal is kind of like you're in the middle of a field, you're cooking with what you have, you know. Very much peasant food, which in most cultures is the best food. Mm-hmm. Less faffy. Yeah. So Emily. Benjamin. You're a doctor. A PhD, not not the one that can help. Where are you a doctor? I'm a uh, doctor, a PhD at uh, work at Dalhousie University, at the moment. Oh, is that a? That's a. I've never heard of that school. Is it a scholarly institution in Halifax, Nova Scotia? I used to work at uh, the University of Nottingham in England, but for the last three years I've been at Dow. So it's been really nice to come home. And for those uh, regular viewers of the show, you may remember uh, another guest who also works at Dalhousie University. He works with Emily in the same department. Dr. Bob. Is Bob, is Bob a doctor? Yep. Uh, Dr. Bob Hewish, who was a guest a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, you might want to wash your hands because the yucca... Good call, Wendy. Thank Thanks, you. Wendy. Thank you. Okay, so we have the pork on. It's kind of boiling in its own juices. We have garlic and onion in there. We're going to add some tomato paste um, and some chicken stock, and then we're going to kind of just let that cook. Then we're going to finish it with uh, some lime juice and a big uh, kind of tablespoon of cumin, which is very mm. common in... Cuban food to finish things with cumin as opposed to in like uh, Mexican food or Indian food where you would kind of sweat the cumin out and get all the flavors out of it. They just throw it all in at the end. It sounds delicious. Yeah. So I'm going to get you to open up this can of tomato paste. Not a can of whoop ass. What? Not a can of whoop ass, a can of tomato no. paste. No. And just leave the, leave the jokes to me, okay? Okay. <laughs> that seems reasonable. <laughs> uh... Uh, Cuban dish with plantains, probably. Uh, there's a lot of plantains in Cuba. And there's so many ways to cook them. Yeah. They're delicious. And actually the dessert we're going to do a little later on can be done with plantains. It can be done with uh, green mango. There we go. It can be done with uh, green passion fruit, anything. Apparently, uh, you've got Noted. Okay, so I just added two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. Em's going to give it a stir. And then we're going to add about uh, two cups, a cup and a half, two cups of chicken stock. So Wendy asks if the pork pieces can be the pork stew packs that the store make up, or should it be like a roast cut up into bigger pieces? So. Um, I prefer to always buy the roasts and cut them up myself because those pork packs that you buy, the stew packs, that's meat that's kind of like on its last legs that they pull off the shelves and then cut up. Like mostly that's what it is. So I always kind of avoid those uh, more value added products because they're generally value added for a reason and not mm. really a good reason. Okay, so we're going to add about uh, two cups of chicken stock in here. We're going to bring that to a boil. 
Then we'll put the lid on it and reduce the heat. And we're gonna add a nice big pinch of salt in with our yuca. Now I'm calling it yuca. It's easier to say than cassava, I guess. Yes, I'd agree. Okay, beans and rice. My fave. Classic, uh, all over Latin America, the Caribbean. Huge, huge meal. People eat it all the time, and we're gonna make it. So we need to cut up these peppers. So these are not spicy, these are mini sweet peppers. Um, sometimes they're called Cubanos. Um, Cubano is a slightly different pepper, but pretty much the same flavor. Um, or like a sweet Italian pepper they're known as as well. Um, and that's what we're gonna use as the base. So in French cooking, the base of the cooking is called mirepoix. You can chop these up if you want. Uh, so. And that is onions, carrot, and celery. In Cuban cooking, they have the same kind of basis, except it's sweet peppers, onions, and garlic. But the same idea. So it's more like uh, Creole than, than French. Are you judging how I'm doing this? No, 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 no. Okay, we're boiling away over here, so I'm gonna turn the heat down. I'm gonna give it one last stir. We'll pop the lid on. We're just gonna let that go. So we want those chopped real fine. Real fine, got it. Uh, is cassava related to parsnip? I don't actually know that. I don't think so, um, but I don't actually know for sure. Good question, Helen. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Where'd the research team go? Suze? Yeah, is cassava related to parsnip? Looks it. Does kind of look it. Texture-wise? Uh, once it's cooked, it's more like a potato. Uh, yeah. Like a stringy potato. It does. It smells pretty good in here already. It does. It smells fantastic. It's kind of, I would say cassava, like when it's cooked, it's actually similar to like a cooked plantain. Yeah. Would be what I would kind of compare it to. So Emily, you're a world traveler. You've been, where have you been and you've been all over the place? Uh, not to too many places, but around 30 countries or so. Yeah, not too many, just 30. Just 30 guys. No Middle no East, deal. Europe, Caribbean, South America. So every, everywhere. Canada, the U.S., I've been to the U.S. twice. Okay, where haven't you been? Haven't I been? Well, that's really it's back to the peanut question of um, a lot of Asian countries I'd love to go to, but haven't had the opportunity. I'm quite spoiled with work that I get to go to Europe a fair amount. You're actually going like in a couple of days, yeah, right? On, on Valentine's Thursday? Day? Yep. I'm going to show my husband I love him by abandoning him. Leaving him? him. I'm going to help you with this. This is the point where I'm just like, I just want to do it. I'm sorry. That's reasonable. It's like when I see somebody writing poorly. Is that the little dig there? Oh, did it sound like the dig? <laughs> hmm. Does anybody have any questions about anything we're doing so far? Anything at all? Or about Dr. Kirk here? Emily's fine, FYI. I'm not insisting on being called. She's just saying that when the cameras are off, it's like, my name is Dr. Kirk, and don't you forget it. Yep. So we can't find any conclusive information as to whether parsnip and yuca are related. I think we need to get a better research team. Um, I have a question if anyone else wants to ask. Okay. So Suze wants to know what countries in the Middle East M has been to? Uh, Israel, several times. Uh, Palestine, if we're counting that as a country or a nation, depending on political views, and Jordan. I loved Israel. The food is amazing. The culture is fantastic. Tel Aviv is an outstanding city. 
I really loved it. Seriously thought about moving there. But as a Latin Americanist, I couldn't get much further away from the area. Latin American? Yeah, yeah, the area I work in. Uh, so you've written two books, right? Well, I fully wrote one. The second one was edited. You edited one? Yeah. Okay. So you wrote one book. So you go around here telling everybody you wrote two books. I say I published two books. Oh, it's a uh, great scholarly trick I to see. make yourself sound far more impressive I than see. you are. Uh, and would you like to tell the world what your book is about, Emily? Uh, the one I wrote 100% is uh, about improving sexual diversity rights, but instead of using so LGBT uh, rights, uh, but without a, using a human rights-based approach, which is the normally people say, it's my human right to do this, my human right to marry who I want. Um, but instead, what they did in Cuba, which is what the book is about, they used an entire approach based on uh, health and well-being. So the central argument isn't on um, human rights, but rather on health care. Uh, so you've never seen it elsewhere in the world, and it's been very impactful. So that was the book number one. And the second one's a kid's book? Yes, yeah, so it could. So it's at your level. Perfect. As long as it's got a lot of pictures, we're good. Yeah. And where can they buy your book, Em? One can buy my book. Uh, Amazon, Google Books. Can order it online. It's published by Lexington Press in the United States. There you go. And you might even, if you read the, the. Uh, Thank yous, you might even see a familiar name in there. Mm -hmm. This guy. This guy is such a good friend, he even read my doctoral thesis. Which it's true. is an extraordinary feat because I mean I wouldn't have passed her, but that's that's just personal. Beautiful. There's a reason you don't hear a lot about people reading doctoral theses. They're so boring. It it wasn't that boring. I will say that. It was actually really interesting. He said it wasn't a page turner. It was. It's not. It's not like a, like a an Ian Fleming book. I'll say that, but there wasn't enough mystery in it. No, for not this time. Uh, and we need some more garlic as well, so we can put the onions right onions in there with the peppers. In there. So I should explain what we're going, what we have going on here. Um, so beans and rice is a very like common dish in a lot of the world, and we're gonna do kind of the Cuban version of it. So we're using the peppers, onions, and garlic as the base. And then we're going to add in our beans. We're going to cook those down a little bit. We'll add in some rice, toast it off, add the chicken stock, excuse me, and then we'll cover it and let that cook for about 20 minutes. Then we'll season it. Dunsville. Dunzo. So we'll go with about four cloves. four cloves. A lot of garlic in Cuban food. A lot of garlic. It might uh, also be worth noting that because it's really hard to get a lot of spices. Uh, traditionally, the food used to have more pre-59, but after 59, at the beginning of the revolution, it became really challenging to get a lot of things. So the cooking evolved quite a bit. Same stuff, just different, different foci. Well, there is a movement now, too, for more uh, like pre-revolution food. Oh, yeah. The access has improved a yeah. lot. What is the title of your book? Um, Cuba's Gay Revolution with Lexington Press. Happy to talk about any uh, talk about the topic with anyone if you're of interest. Ben knows how to find me. It's true, I do. There's a, we have a signal on the roof. Yeah. It's a flawless approach. Yeah. You're doing a good job, Em. Thank you. I have to make up for my onion debacle. Way better than I expected. Way better. That was, a, that that was, was a really a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I'm a little bit hurt now. Mediocre. I expected you to be terrible, but you're only okay. <laughs> so it's fine. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Kathy says, such an interesting guest. Oh, thank you, Kathy. I always liked Kathy. <laughs> Actually, you would have met Kathy at the wedding. Really? Yeah, Em was at our wedding, so Kathy, you probably met her. Hello, Kathy. Or saw her, at least. But Em apparently doesn't remember our wedding at all. 
That's not true. I loved your wedding. Mm-hmm. You didn't remember Mike. You don't remember Kathy. To be fair, I did not remember Mike. I was too busy focused on you and your beautiful bride. Sorry. She was a beautiful bride. That's true. Yeah, she was stunning. And M got married this summer. Yep. You were also a stunning bride. Thank you. Yeah, we had one hell of a party, that's for sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So M did something very interesting at her wedding that I'd never seen before, where they had, uh, well, you like, how would you explain it? The the woman, who, the caller. Yeah. So we wanted to have basically a Scottish Kaylee because my husband, although he's South African, um, his family is from Scotland and he lived there for a long time, and a lot of his friends are Scottish. So we wanted to have a proper Scottish Kaylee. So we had a Kaylee band, some local fantastic musicians. Um, finally, Ben learned how to clap at the appropriate time, so that was handy. Took a while. Uh, and we had a caller explaining the dances to everyone, because not everyone would know them. Uh, and then just had one hell of a party. And it was nice, because it's music that everyone can dance to and get involved in. Yeah, and so the caller was there actually like explaining how to, like showing everybody how to do the dance and everything, so everybody could get involved. It wasn't like you just had to like have this, this knowledge uh, before you showed up. It was... It was a really cool thing. I, I really enjoyed it. I think Thank a lot of people you. really did because it kind of took the tension away. It got people dancing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, everyone got really involved. It was great yeah. to see in, yeah. in there. Yeah, more weddings should do stuff like that. Well, there can I be think. so many issues with young people music, older generation music. Not everyone's into a standard style. Oh, Kathy, I was joking. She doesn't actually have a kid's book. That was just, I was joking. <laughs> Leave the jokes to me, Ben. Sorry. Sorry. I just like to make fun of M because we're a friends lot. and that's what we do. Um, okay, we need beans. But thank you for your support, Kathy. So we are using canned beans, obviously, because the show is not, you know, two days long and we didn't want to pre-soak them and then boil them. Uh, these are organic black beans from Costco. Costco. I yeah. recognize the brand. They're fantastic. Yeah, they are They're really, really good. good. I'm a big uh, black bean fan, so no, my black beans. These are great. There you go. And so cost effective. They are. They're very, very cheap for a case. I had a thing, and I got rid of it. There we go. So we're just going to drain and rinse these guys. Just like this. So I'm, not only are you a world traveler, a doctor, an author, you're all, you also speak multiple languages. Multiple languages. A plethora of a languages. Plethora. I don't know if three is a plethora. Yeah, that's not that many, you're right. No. Depending on how much, uh, my English, obviously, and French and Spanish, but depending on how much wine I had, I feel like I can speak Italian. So but I, only if it's Italian wine, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And whilst I'm in Italy. See, I'm the same with French. I can only speak French if I've had a few beverages. It's amazing how much yeah. it helps. But then you have to be balanced because you have one too many and then it all falls apart. Yeah. Well, like, when, I, when I was living in Montreal, I like, I struggled with learning, the, learning French because in, at my job, everybody would just speak English to yeah. me. So, but then we got in trouble with the language police because I was speaking English in the kitchen. And so I had to start speaking more French. And I just wasn't getting it and wasn't getting it. And then one night we had like a staff party and everybody was standing around drinking. And then they stopped me and they're like, you realize we've been talking French for like an hour. Is you haven't said a single English word. And I was like, no. And then it all went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just gone. Okay, so we're gonna heat up this pot back here over medium heat. Some olive oil in there. And then we'll throw in the onions, garlic, and peppers. Do you know, we started using this olive oil because you use it. It's good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Also Costco. Shout out Costco. Let's get some Costco money up in here, right? Yeah, Come on. Okay, so we're just going to let that pan heat up. It should be pretty quick. The yuca is boiling away. The meat is braising away. We're almost there. Now it's just kind of a waiting game. We'll get this going, uh, and then we'll do the dessert, which isn't going to take too long cool. at all. So this dessert, uh, we're going to use... Green mangoes, not the, the, by green I don't necessarily mean the color, I mean the freshness. So these are very, very hard. Oh boy. They're not ripe, but that's kind of the idea here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel them. 
Okay, we're going to cut them. Off my hand. We're going to boil them until they soften. And then we're going to take them out of the pot. We're going to um, caramelize some brown sugar and cook the mango down into the brown sugar. And that's going to be kind of a dessert. So again, this is something that you would have in a field as opposed to in like a nice restaurant. Yeah. No problem, Kathy. Kathy says she's multitasking and missed the joke about the kid's book. Oh, okay. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. So we just want to cook this until the onions and the garlic and the peppers soften, and then we'll add the beans in. So. I have a stupid question. Yeah. Um, what does braised mean? So braised means to cook uh, on a low heat in moisture. Low heat in moisture, okay. Yeah, that's all it means. Oh, okay. So like if you've ever made a stew, you've braised something. Got it. Yeah, but like generally, Braising is like a very long amount of time, but we're doing kind of a quick version here. And it's usually typically used for like really tough cuts of meat. So like, uh, also buco is a classic Italian braise. So it's like the shin, mm, yeah, the yeah. shin of the, of the beef. Cool. Because it gives you so much, it's really tough. So the only way to kind of break that down and soften it is long, long cooking time. So that's what braising is. Noted, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Good question, Em. I don't normally cook with meat, so I've been trying to get better. So you you said specifically that you wanted to do pork. Yep. Is there like do you not eat beef at all or? Uh, I mean, if someone made it for me at their home, I wouldn't make a fuss about it. But I don't I don't just don't like the taste. Okay. I don't like the texture. I don't like that it's from a cow. You know, this is from a pig, right? Yeah, but the cow is the the least um, environmentally friendly thing you could possibly buy, with the exception of almond milk. Uh, yeah, that is true. Just not into, just not into cows. I that's like, uh, I like pork a lot, but the trouble I have is I don't know how to cook it. So that's why I was hoping, I mean, was excited about this. Well, this is one way. So, like, maybe we'll have you back sometime and we'll do like more of a, like pork chop meal or something or like pork tenderloin. The only reason I, I was going to do that, but we had recently done that, like just the end of last season. So I Fair didn't enough. want to do pork tenderloin again, but this is going to be good. It's going to be real good. It smells amazing. Yeah, so that's just the peppers and the onions, really. Because, like, that flavor's coming to the peppers right away. And in French and Italian cooking, French more than Italian, um, if you were to use peppers, which you wouldn't use them a lot, but if you were, you would add them closer to the end because mm. they get kind of bitter. But in this, you cook them, and then you're kind of, like, you're cooking them for so long that you're kind of cooking that bitterness out. Hmm. Yeah. Got it. We have fun. So you see, you see how it looks kind of like um, almost a little creamy. Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? So that's that's what's called sweating the vegetables. Okay. So we're drawing the moisture out of the vegetables, and that's going to kind of go to flavor our rice. Got it. Yeah. And those look pretty soft, so we're going to drop the beans in there now. And even if we were using dried beans, we'd have them cooked before. We don't, we'd have them already softened. Beans away. And actually, we're going to add bay leaf in here, too. Oh, good call. Which is another classic kind of Cuban flavor. So underappreciated, the bay leaf. The humble bay leaf. Delicious. So, have you ever heard the saying, resting on your laurels? Yeah. Bay leaf. Really? So bay laurel is the plant that bay leaf comes from. Oh, cool. Yeah. Would you like me to put one in? Yeah. And actually, if you've ever seen like the old Roman, like um, where they would have the kind of headpiece, do you know what I'm talking about? They would have like... Um, yeah, yeah. That's bay leaf. That's laurel. Cool. Yeah. So is one enough or do you want more? Um, one's good. Well, sometimes if they're smaller, you want yep. a little extra. Um, no stranger to the bay leaf. Uh, let's see. We, I think a deer roast is braised for a long, long time. Yeah, so with deer roast, I mean, you could slow roast it. Um, so the only real difference between roasting and braising is the moisture. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about the mango cooked in brown sugar. We're going to get to that. I'm excited for that, too. Uh, yeah. We're getting there. Do it. Okay. So we're just going to add the rice in here and toast that for a sec. 
Toasted, toasted, toasted. Now, because of the way we're cooking this, the measurement of liquid to rice doesn't really matter that much. Like, we want to kind of gauge it, but it doesn't have to be super specific. Okay. Um, so yeah. we're still going to try and get, like, a two-to-one ratio. But if it's a little off, not the end of the world. Okay. It's always better to air a little bit more than a little bit less. Because then we can just let the rice steam a little bit more and we'll absorb mm. more of it. Can you, are you seeing that in the, yeah? It looks so pretty. Hold it right the camera. So pretty. Okay, so we're gonna turn this up to high. We're gonna put in the rest of the chicken stock, which is about two cups. So the rice is two to one ratio, so that should be good. Fantastic. It's so impressive that you can just decide how much it is. I'm very, the type of person who constantly needs to measure it says two cups, it must be two cups. This is cooking. This isn't baking. If, so if I was just making the rice on its own, I would, I would have that kind of exact measurement. Okay. But with this, because there's the rice, if there isn't quite enough moisture in here, the rice will pull it out of the peppers, it'll pull it out of the beans. So it, it will just draw the moisture out of the things anyway. Oh, okay. And if there's a little too much, the rice and the beans will both absorb it back up. Oh. Yeah. Got it. So we're just going to bring that to a boil, just like you would normally with rice. And we'll put the lid on and turn it down, and we're just going to let it simmer for 20 minutes. We'll just add some salt and some pepper. And then we're going to finish it with a nice big pinch of cumin. So you want to put some pepper in there? Yeah. How much? Oh, just enough. Got it. Just enough. Do we have any questions? Uh... Are you caramelizing? Yeah, so we are going to caramelize the sugar with the mangoes. Uh, we'll boil the mangoes first in water. Uh, you could do it in a sugar syrup too if you wanted. We'll drain them. We're just going to boil them until they soften. We'll drain them and then we'll make a caramel with the brown sugar and cook the mango into it. Uh, Steve, I didn't even know you could grow bay laurel here. That's amazing. So Steve says they grow bay laurel. They actually have four trees. Cool. Fresh off the tree into the soup. It sounds delicious. That's amazing. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Mike's getting hungry, I can tell. So the, the first show Mike did here, it was like, I think it was, was it Bob? No, it was by myself, right? Yeah. So it was like the salad was done, so I gave him the salad, and the main was done. So he like ate throughout the show, but then nice. every other show, it's just like all the foods at the end. And I can see him kind of like, just like, give me some food, man. Well, also it smells amazing. It's worse when you can smell it ahead of time, I feel like, if you're hungry. Boil, baby, boil. It's coming. It's so close. It's so close. So this would be a good time to uh, reaffirm our giveaway. So we have this beautiful set of Ashworks boards. We have a charcuterie board and then two tasting boards. So, you know, you're a couple. You sit down, you make a nice charcuterie plate on this guy. Then you each get these as plates. Terrific. We'll be giving these away at the very end of the show, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Kathy, this is not five-minute rice. This is uh, basmati rice, so it's going to take about 20 minutes to cook. Not these. These are cutting boards, the rice we put in there. This the basmati. And it's almost up to a boil. What else we got? Uh, yeah, so the, the caramelized mango would be really good on ice cream, um, but they didn't have ice cream in the field. They didn't, when I was watching it, they didn't have ice cream. No, so. harder uh, to make that there. Yeah, a little bit of cream would be good. Uh, we're just going to have the mango straight up with a little pinch of salt. Uh, Helen, it's not, the rice isn't really that similar to risotto because with risotto, uh, you're stirring it, trying to draw the starch out of the rice, and you're using a rice that's already high in starch, so you're mm -hmm. thickening it that way. With this, we're just essentially, it's more like a rice pilaf than anything else. And it's boiling, so we're going to pop the lid on. Timer on for 20 minutes. Temperature to low. And we're just going to leave it alone and let it do its thing. Uh, That's also a great on its standalone vegetarian meal. Yeah. It's fantastic. Absolutely. And I mean, we you, have could, that a lot. you could also just cook pork directly into this. So if you had like some pieces of pork or even some leftover pork, you could... Um, like kind of saute it a bit first, add your peppers, onions, garlic, mm. then add your beans and your rice, and you have everything in one meal. Nice. I actually did it, I was um, 
when I first started researching the Cuban food a couple of days ago, I made something similar with bacon. Mm. So I did the bacon and then made pretty much the same dish. It was really good. Uh, Dr. Emily, did you try eating food on banana leaves? Um. We have a man down. Oh, the. Right. No. Eating food off of banana leaves yeah. as in a plate? Yeah. Or wrapped in? Wrapped in, yes. It's very common in um, Mexican cuisine to have things wrapped in it, either fish or vegetables. So I've um, eaten food that's been cooked in banana leaves, but I've never eaten food off of a banana leaf as a plate that I can think of. But you could. I could, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to just peel these guys. Uh, they're just black beans, Doris. Just regular black beans, uh, canned, organic. Yeah. I'm making a bit of a mess Oh here. my god. That's okay. Does anybody have any other questions? I guess this would be a good time to mention Patreon. So if you don't know what Patreon is, it is like a, how can you, it's like a membership service almost, but you get to choose your membership level. So what you do is you go there, you decide whether you want to pay a dollar a month or 50 bucks a month, and each level has different benefits. And that money goes to support this show. So I could, you know, start paying Mike for making this show look so amazing. We can keep buying ingredients. We can, you know, kind of promote the show a little bit more. So that's what that money goes to. So if you would like to help support the show, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Ben Kelly Cooks. And you can become a patron and help this show grow and reach more people. That's really nice. Uh, Doris, I know that I have a ripe mango because it is very, well, so these aren't ripe mangoes. These are actually very, very hard, and that's intentional. That's what we want for this dessert. But a ripe mango should be kind of soft, not not like squishy, but soft. And if you come down by the, uh, by the stem, where the stem would come out, and you kind of give it a little push, it should be soft there. And a fresh mango, or a ripe mango, will smell, smell. like mango. Now, is this to your liking? Yeah, that's perfect. Because we're cooking it. If if we weren't cooking it, I'd have you peel the rest of that little big green stuff off. It's one thing uh, Grant really misses uh, here is the, the beautiful fruit that you can get in South Africa. Fresh, yeah, beautiful fruit. Mangoes is his favorite. So em Emily's husband, his name is Grant. He's a very nice young man. Uh, he's from South Africa, and he currently works for the Department of Natural Resources. Is that what he works for? Uh, environment industry, In but environment. we don't want to give specifics. Right. Forget I said anything. <laughs> Sorry, man. Let's just say he carries a badge and he's badass. <laughs> he does, and he is. Yeah, he is badass. That's for sure. I'm a lucky girl with that one. Okay, so as you can see, like this mango is pretty firm, which again is what we want. And we're just gonna cut it into kind of even sized pieces. Uh, so Christine says in her country they use banana leaves as plates, uh, even when they eat in the field, they'll have like cooked fish, raw tomato, mm. salted egg, and steamed rice. Sounds delicious. That does sound awesome. Oh, hello, Mike. My call just joined. Thank you. Nope. Ben, if you go to any Latin American country, which one would you go to, do you think? Mm. Um, I mean, I would really like to go to Mexico. Like that, I think. That would be like my number one. Mexico is amazing. Because Mexican food is like some of my favorite food in the world. So I would definitely like to check that out. Okay. Hey, Mike. So this is, you commented. So we're just going to cut these up. I'm going to let you do those guys. Okay. And that guy. 
And we just want them about even size pieces. And I'm just going to put them right in here. Mm. Yeah, I can all put a link. Uh, Yes, I'll put a link somewhere. Actually, I'll probably do it right here. Hold on, let's see. Facebook doesn't like when you put links out of it, but we'll see. Uh... Okay, so we're just gonna throw all this in here. And all we're going to do is put some water on this, and we're just going to boil it until it's soft. How much water? Just enough to cover it. OK. Oh, the link worked awesome. Sweet. OK, let's take a look at our yucca. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, so you can see it's pretty tender. It's coming apart. Looks pretty done to me. So we're just going to drain this off. And we're just going to let it kind of steam until we're waiting for, until everything else is done. I had a dinner this weekend, and I took like half my kitchen with me. And I haven't unpacked it yet, so I don't have everything I usually have. seems precarious. We'll put it there. Done. Oh, that's clever. Okay. Oh, it's so nice to see that here. I've never had it in Canada. What? Yucca. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I got that at Pete's. Um, it was like $3 for that piece. Right on. Yeah. Uh, is it like rice pudding? Is what like rice pudding? Oh, the, the rice that you use for... Like risotto? What are we talking about? Mango is in a lot of different cuisines because it grows in a lot of different places. It's very tropical and it's delicious. Uh, what else do we got? Mammary grows naturally inexpensive. Yeah. Not so much here. Uh, so, Christine, I boiled the yucca for about, yucca for about 25 minutes just until it was soft. Um, just till it's not poisoned anymore. Um, oh, cool. Steve says he's going to make chef toolboxes. That's awesome. I would like that. Uh, sweet. He says that he'll ask for my design ideas. Nice. Okay. So we're just kind of waiting here. I should turn this off. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have opened the rice. I was not thinking about why what I did, did, but I did. That's okay. Let's take a look at the meat. Ooh. Oh, that looks great. Meat. It's nice and thick, nice and creamy. Beauty. So you know when the brown stuff gets stuck to the bottom of a pan like this? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, so you scrape that off. Okay. And then that flavors your sauce. So in French cooking, that's called fond. So well, like if you were searing like a steak or something, you take mm -hmm. it out of the pan and there's like brown stuff on the bottom, we drain the oil and use like wine or stock to lift that up. Oh. And then that would like flavor our sauce or, or whatever. Okay, so don't panic. No, 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 you want that. If it's black, you don't want it. But if it's like a light brown or then just scrape it into your sauce and that's all flavor. Cool. Yep, and it's a lot easier to clean your pan like this, right? So you scrape that off and then it's not all stuck to your pan when you're trying to clean it. So let's give this a taste and see what it needs. Oh, it's a lot of pressure. All right. Oh, that's lovely. It is. But we're going to add a pile of lime juice in there mm. and some cumin. Nice. So let's just check the meat. 
Oh. oh. I was very confused. I felt something and I was like, what? There's nothing there. So, now ideally, because it's a pork shoulder, it's a, it's a more tough cut of beef, or pork rather. So ideally, you would cook this for like hours and hours and hours. But this is what sausage will be made of. Oh. Mm, it's good. So hot. Oh, so good. No, now I'm cracking under pressure. <laughs> what I do really like about Cuban food, and why I cook it a lot, and Latin food in general as well, is because it is super healthy and it's inexpensive to make. I think are two distinguishing factors about Latin American cooking. That's true. Which I really like. You don't need to buy an amazing cut of lamb to have a nice meal, a nice healthy meal, with lots of leftovers. That's true. Okay, so we're just going to let that cook until the rice is done. The reason we're not adding, do you know why we're not adding the lime juice yet? Because it'll make the whole thing taste acidy. Well, we want that. Okay. That's what we're going then for. Then the answer is no, I don't know. So the lime juice will actually toughen up the meat. Oh. I would not have guessed that. Yeah. Okay. Think of, have you ever, you've, well, you've never had a ceviche because you can't eat it, but yeah. do you know what ceviche is? Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, ceviche is essentially like seafood, could be uh, fish, scallops, um, uh, shrimp, anything like that. And it's, it's cured with, just with lime juice. Just really quickly, you squeeze a bunch of lime juice off of it. And the acid in the lime juice kills bacteria and it actually starts to toughen and kind of essentially cook the, the flesh. So if we put lime juice in here, it's going to do the exact same thing to the pork. Mm -hmm. And it's going to toughen it and kind of um, cook it more, but not in the way that it's going to break down the fibers. It's just going to toughen it. So that's why we're going to add it at the very end. Got it. The more you know, people, the more you know. That's a really useful piece of advice. Yeah. Especially cooking like Mexican food or Latin American food that yeah. has a lot of citrus in it. But having said that, you can use that to your advantage. So... Like you can use citrus in marinades, right? Mm. So like, um, like Cuban pork would be like a Cuban pork um, roast would usually be marinated in like a pile of orange juice and lime juice and stuff like that. But because you're kind of taking that out and you're not actually cooking it in it, it's not having the same effect. So it is going to kind of toughen up the outside and break down some of the enzymes, but that's just going to allow the flavor to get in as opposed to Got it. toughening it up. Interesting. Over. I use lime a lot, but always um, at the end. But I didn't know why, just because that's what people do. But yeah, it just brightens up all the flavors. That's lovely. Hello, Lauren. Do any of you have any questions, you wonderful people out there in Facebook world? While we're waiting a few minutes here, I pop a lid on that guy. Wrong lid. Em, did you know that putting in a lid on a pot makes it boil 30% quicker? 30%. 30%. What study cites that? I don't know, but a chef told me that once. Mm -hmm. One of my dear chef friends. That's um, also worth knowing. Yeah. It might be like 29%, but who cares? You, I do. You clearly As a scholar, do. Sorry, I would like to know care. specifically. Um, well, it's time. Sorry. I'm very excited about this dinner. Get, get out of here. Can't believe you would do that. I do my best. So what else? Do you have any questions? Any food questions? Any Ben questions? Any, uh, Doris asks, what are we making? So we're making Cuban pork stew with Cuban beans and rice with <laughs> Cuban stewed mangoes and caramelized sugar. With a Cuban attitude. With a Cuban attitude. That's that's what we're making. Uh, oh, calaman is calamansi. It's like a baby lime, apparently, in Filipino cooking. I like mm. it. Does cool. anybody have any questions? Emily, do you have any questions? Do I have any questions for you? What's your favorite children's book, Emily? Children's book. Um, the one. But oh, we just did the exact same thing. That was crazy. Uh, it's called rapport, people. We're friends. Well, shut up. I'm feeling lonely. Uh, the the one with the dragon, and uh, the last line, 
uh, is about... Um, she is a doctor Robert and an author. <laughs> Robert Munch. What's the book called? Paperbag Princess. That's it. Robert, you are a bum. It's a very simplified way to look at the complexities of the patriarchy for children. And it's a fantastic story. There you go. Strong, independent women. Uh, another Dr. Kirk asks, is there much difference in preparing this dish between concentrated lime and freezing your... Freezing your... Freezing your... <laughs> John, is there more to that? Or is it just, are you asking if there's a difference between using fresh or frozen lime juice? Uh, Doris, my cousin married a Cuban. They have a rental house in Havana. You should go there on VK. And you should invite all of us because we would love We'll do a show there. It'll be great. Yeah, It'll I can great. interpret and we can go have fun. Um, John, if the question is, is, it different, is there a difference between using uh, fresh or frozen lime juice? Absolutely. Those like... Uh, especially like those little uh, plastic green and yellow yeah, things of yeah. citrus juice. They're terrible, guys. They do not taste like citrus juice. First of all, they're pasteurized, so you're cooking a lot of the flavor out and you're cooking yeah. a lot of the like nutrients out of it. It's just it's not so good. Freshly squeezed can't be beat. And we'll show you a trick for getting the most, most juice out of your citrus, which a lot of these fine people should already know. And if you don't, if you don't know, well, now you know. Got well, it. You, well, you will know very soon. All right, let's check. Let's see what's going on here. The rice is almost done. Our mango is a boiling. It's terrific. Everything's happening. Um, yeah, he said freshly squeezed yeah. juice. Yeah. Yeah, freshly squeezed is definitely the way to go, in my opinion. And on this show, that's the only opinion that matters. That's reasonable. I mean, it's, it's your true. titular show. Uh, Paperback Princess all the way. She Thank never... you. I remember that book, actually. That was a good book. I really liked uh, Mortimer Be Quiet, which was another Robert Munch book. Mm. That was a really Robert good one. Munch. And 50 Below Zero, I think, was another one that was really good. I also like, I always really like the Bernstein Bears. Oh, good. yeah. Good stuff. I did not time this very well today. I messed up. So hungry. I messed up. Mike's dying. He's he keeled over. Oh, Wendy says it was on the year-end exam, how to get the most juice out of the citrus. Uh, Doris says she has a big, beautiful rental house. Doris, we're coming. We're on our way. <laughs> we're all going to Havana. I feel like we need to spend more time with Doris. <laughs> so um, these mangoes, they weren't that hard, but they were the hardest I could find, so they're probably not going to take too long to cook. And because we're going to cook them in the sugar, we don't want to uh, overcook them too much, but they still need a little bit more time. Okay, mm. did use, uh, we did use black beans. Uh, yes, more to require these hilarious, it is. All right, we're almost there. We're so close, guys. We're getting there, we're so close. Uh, let's finish the pork because the rice is almost done. So we'll get that out of the way. If you don't lift the lid up, how do you know that the rice is done? Because of the timer. Got it, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Got it. So when doing this, it's 20 minutes. Generally, when I'm cooking basmati rice, I just do it for 17, take it 17. off and let it rest for anywhere from 5 to 17 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said that on another show, didn't yeah. you? When you were on TV. Yeah. Yeah, I go on TV, no big deal. Well, with this face, who could blame people for wanting to watch you? It's almost mandatory. Uh, Helen, uh, I have never used an Instapot. Um, I've heard a lot about them. But it's, it's not really the kind of thing that I would use very often. We do have a slow cooker. I used it to make apple butter recently. Mm. Uh, and sometimes I take it with me when I do dinners. Like if they're, like I did a big cocktail party and we had chili as one of the things. We had a chili station, so I took it to keep the chili hot. But that's about all I use it for. It's not, I, I prefer to cook like this, but I have heard good things about the Instapot. Um, maybe I will see if I can get one and do a review of it because I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Rice is done, so we're going to pop that off. We're just going to remove it and let that sit for five minutes. Just five. So we're going to roll these guys. Come sa. Just like this. Two at once, Sam. Two at once. We're multitasking. So uh, you can use jasmine rice. Um, 
I don't know. I actually don't know what the typical rice in Cuba is. There's so many different varieties of rice out there. Um, but uh, sometime in the next couple of months, I'm going to do a whole blog post about all the different varieties of rice. I just don't know exactly when. An Instapot is like a slow cooker. It's like a very high-tech slow cooker. Okay. Limes. We got them. You want them. Let's do this. So we're going to... Do you know how to do this? Do you remember? I've seen, it, I've seen it on TV. I've seen you do it on TV. So we have the lime, like so. We've rolled it with our hands, firmly but not aggressively. We go to the middle and then go to the side, right? Yeah. Because you did, you did. I'm so proud of you. Because we don't want I'm this so bit in the middle. That's so true. Let's do all of them. Oh, oh. Oh, I didn't realize it was a pressure cooker. Also, that's interesting. I like that. What's that? Oh, that the. Uh, uh, Instapot is a pressure cooker. Oh. I did not know that. That's, That's interesting. So can you? So then, can you use it like a regular slow or pressure cooker? I wonder. Can you use it for canning? I wonder. Mm. So many wonderings. Okay, but you have to do the other side also. Oh, we do both sides. Yeah. Okay. On TV, you just did one side. A um, couple times I've done the whole thing. Maybe you should watch more when I'm on TV. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's check our mango. Yeah, they're soft. Right, let's drain these guys. Um, so they're just fork tender, just like a potato would be fork tender. That's all I'm looking for here. I'm going to drain these guys off. And middle. And just over. like that. I'm going to put it back on the heat with about half a cup of brown sugar. What do you do with the sad part? So with that, we're gonna do, so you can just squeeze this like this and you're gonna get quite a bit out or you can actually take the time and cut around, but we'll just leave it like that because you're still gonna get tons out of that. Got so it. now we squeeze. Would you like some help squeezing? Yes, please. So we're not gonna do them all. We'll start with about half of them and then oh, we'll boy. check the flavor. Oh, I love the smell of fresh lime juice. I prefer it when it's with, you know, margarita or rum and coke or something. We don't have those things, I'm sorry. Did you know you can have a crazy reaction if you get sunlight and lime juice? So if there's lime juice in your hands and you get it the sun? I've heard that. Is really? that true? You get, like, crazy. Wow. I didn't know that. Learned the hard way in Mexico. Not me, but wow. my wife and my friend. Really? Jeez. I don't know. I don't know. Could they hear that? Did they hear that? Kind of. You can repeat it. So Mike said that if you have uh, lime juice on your hand and then you get sunlight on your hand, like actual sunlight, not the detergent, right? Yeah. Then you, well, that's a, that's a real question. Uh, you're, you're making fun of it. It is a real question. No, I'm with Mike on that one. Uh, but then you can have like a really bad reaction to it. You can get rashes and stuff, which is interesting. I didn't know that. So a friend of ours batch made a massive thing of margaritas and then we went to the beach. The was so well, slow. Let's taste it first. Oh, sorry. They were like all swollen and stuff? Oh, oh, is swollen. he like... It happened to my wife's lips because she oh, drank yeah. it. Oh, jeez. Are, like Are you sure it was the lime? Yep. Yeah, there is. Okay, so we got the lime in there. We're not going to need the rest of those. And I'm going to put... I actually didn't realize I was so low on cumin. So we're going to put half of this, which is about a tablespoon in total. We're going to put half of this with the pork and the other half in with the rice. Ideally, it'd be about a tablespoon in each. Just like that. So I'm going to get you to stir, stir that up. And then we're going to open up the rice. Look how beautiful oh, that is. Oh, that's gorgeous. You see that? Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. So we'll pop that bay leaf out of there. Just like that. Put the rest of that cumin in there. Things are happening, guys. I'm going to grab this from you. I'm going to stir this up. And see, there's no like, there's no water in the bottom of that either, right? Oh wow, got it. Cool. Okay. So let's give that a little taste. Oh, things are happening. Okay. Who's hungry, guys? I'm in. Let's just give this one more taste. 
Limey, I love it. A little bit more of that. Stir that, please, Em. Well, let's serve it up. What are we going to serve this in? Are you guys as excited as I am? Because I think this is going to be yes. real delicious. Michael, you get first. Let's get a shot of that. Beautiful. Ooh. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good, eh? Fantastic. Thank you. Kirk. Thank you very much. Suze, it's time for your cameo. I don't think you're going to like this. No, I'm serious. No, because I don't think you're going to like the amount of lime juice in it. Uh, what? That's the dessert. It's the peppers you're seeing. Okay. Well, that's a pretty one. I'm going to take a picture of this real quick for the recipes tomorrow. So as usual, the recipes will be out hopefully tomorrow. Uh, if I don't get lazy or if I don't forget, they'll be on my Facebook page in picture form. Um, but if you want like a PDF of them, just send me a message and I'll email them to you because I have them all in PDF form. Uh, uh, so we have way more than four servings. We could probably feed six, six with this. And I started with about three to four pounds of pork. Okay, let's give this a try, Em. Oh, that's tasty. Especially mm -hmm. with the rice and everything. Mm -hmm. Look at this, guys. That's lovely. Excellent teamwork. Good job. Okay. The mangoes are getting there. They're almost starting to caramelize. We're going to finish that with a little pinch of salt, just like that. And then we're going to uh, add a little touch of lime juice right at the very, very end. Okay, so before I take a big bite here, we should do our giveaway. So, I don't know how we're going to do this giveaway yet. I've been thinking about it. I don't know. Um, Any thoughts? Well, how do you normally do it? I don't know. We've done a few different ways. Um, Still testing question. What is the name of my dear friend Dr. Emily Cook Kirk's book? The winner will receive this beautiful oh. uh, romantic set of Ashworks cutting boards. Uh, cutting boards, we have the charcuterie board and the two tasting boards. They're beautiful. Um, so who can name Emily's book? Do you think anybody can do it? 
I don't know. I feel really self-conscious now. And to sweeten the pot. I'm going to feel bad if no one knows. I'll throw in one of these terrific Chef Ben uh, basic salad dressing recipe and basic food temp magnets. You get the magnets. You get the charcuterie board. You Oh, John John Kirk. I, mm, that seems like cheating. I, I can't give it to you, John. I'm sorry. You're the dad. But now, now he's ruined it for everybody. I didn't. John, I'm going to throw this to the people and see if they think you should get it. So John is Emily's dad. Yeah. Um, he's very familiar with the book. I'm going to need a yay or a nay from a, from a bunch of you to see if John should get it. If not, we'll do a different draw. Mm-hmm. That's, that's reasonable. Sorry, John. I'm going to keep eating. Yep. Let's see some yays and some nays. You like it, Mike? Mm. Worth the wait. A little different. Digging the line. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's fantastic, What's isn't it? What's the sauce? Oh, it's a big bite. We got two yeses. John, it looks like it might be going to you. So Mike asked what's in the sauce. We have pork, we have garlic, we have onions, we have tomato paste, lime juice, cumin, and chicken stock. Dr. John Kirk, it looks like you are the official winner of this beautiful Ashworks cutting board set <laughs> and this wonderful Chef Ben Kelly fridge magnet. I expect, this, expect to see this on your fridge the next time I'm at your house. So we'll set this aside. That's really nice of your fans. It is very watching. Nice Everybody says yes. It's all yours, John. <laughs> okay. One last thing. Let's just finish up these mangoes. So you can see all that nice little bit of caramelization in there. Oh, my God. They smell amazing. Mm, really good. So once we hit them with the lime juice, that's just kind of going to brighten them up. Oh, wow, they look great. Yeah. They almost look like canned peaches. Yeah, that's what it is. Have a little more salt on here. You know what? You know what, Em? Let's get crazy here. And let's... Oh, uh, JK says we'll treasure it. Thanks, guys. You better, John. Uh, I'll be right back. Ten seconds. Fill time, Em. Fill time. Fill time. Um, interesting fact, um, I also started Cuba Studies because my father is a Cuba specialist, so I'm sure he's quite keen on, on this episode as well and will certainly appreciate the support and solidarity from everyone. Uh, okay, so we're going to add just a little bit of lime zest to this because we're crazy and we love this stuff. It looks pretty. It does look pretty. A little bit juice on there. Ma'am, I hope you know part of the deal is you get to do all the dishes. Uh, I did not sign up for that. <laughs> we can do some teamwork dishes. Oh, thank you. It's going to be real hot. I'm glad you warned me. Oh, that's wonderful. Ah, that's a slippery mango. It's slippery. That is a slippery mango. Mm. Get back here. Just take a minute. Okay. Dr. Kerr, oh, I was going to, you got to get another one. I was going to cheers you. Okay. Yeah, I'll get another one. Mm. Uh, Doris, these are not organic limes. They're just regular ones. They were 79 cents at Superstore. Uh, I'm not that fancy. I'm sorry. I wish I was. Um... But I did wash them. Okay. Dr. Emily Kirk, thank Chef you for being on the show. I very much appreciate it. You did a fantastic job. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you, Chef Cheers. Kelly. Let's give this a try. 
Oh, it's hot. Again, I just jumped in. Frankly, it's so good. Oh my god, it's so hot. Really lovely flavor. Wow. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I sincerely appreciate it, as always. And again, if you'd like to support the show, go to Patreon. I'm going to throw the link in here again. Patreon.com forward slash Ben Kelly Cooks. And for as little... No, that didn't work. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support the show. Help me get the groceries for the show. Help me pay Mike so he doesn't leave and so we don't go back to the one cell phone camera. Um... Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to... Hold on, I'm going to... Just give me a second here. What am I trying to do? Okay, there's the link. Patreon.com forward slash Chef Ben Kelly Cooks. Thank you again to Ashworks Cutting Boards. Thank you to Atlantic Livestream. Thank you to my wonderful guest, Dr. Emily Kirk. Pleasure you can find her at Dalhousie University. Yep. Uh, and you can find her book, Cuba's Gay Revolution, wherever fine books are sold. Yep. Is that correct? Thank you to all of you for watching. I sincerely and honestly always appreciate it. Uh, I will be back next week. I don't know who my guest is. I don't know what we'll be making, but it'll be a lot of fun. I'll see you then. Take us out, Mike. Let's get out of here.